Good evening to our Facebook audience. I'm Linda Winkles and I'll be your MC. Thanks for joining us today for the Fort Wayne Wrights Virtual Community Action Council for the month of July. We have a great agenda scheduled for this evening. Viewers are welcome to ask questions during the live stream about the topics presented tonight. We will try to address your questions before the conclusion of the live stream, but if we don't get to your question or you are viewing this at a later time, Leave a question and we will respond to you separately. Community discussion topics for tonight include bridge construction updates, Alaska outdoor safety, vacation Bible school, and PFAS groundwater testing. Following these presentations, Medic Alaska, North Haven Communities, Exchange, DECA, and the Director of Family and Morale, Welfare and Recreation will present information of interest. Tonight's Community Action Council is hosted by U.S. Army Garrison, Alaska Commander, Colonel Christopher Ruga. Colonel Ruga, over to you, sir, for welcome remarks. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, and I just want to say welcome and thank you for uh, taking time with us tonight to get some good information about the uh, Fort Wainwright community. In the uh, Waiting in the wings, we've got a bunch of fully masked uh, uh, subject matter experts with a lot of great information about summer activities and key critical inform and critical information uh, about Fort Wainwright. And so without any further ado, I will let them come in and give you that information. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Ruga. Mr. Jason Webb from the Directorate of Public Works will give us an update on River Road and Bailey Bridge construction. Hi, my name is Jason Webb. Um, I'm the uh, Fort Wainwright Bridge Inspection Program Manager. I'm also the project manager for both the River Road and the Bailey Bridge pro repair projects. Um, first, I guess, is going to be the River Road Bridge. We closed the bridge the 7th of July, um, and they should be starting demolition hopefully this at the end of this week. They've got fences up on their on their their sites for their laydown areas, and their construction activities should be starting hopefully at the end of the week. Um, Right now, they're scheduled out through October. They're hoping to get done early, but October right now will be the date that we've got until we know further. Some of the things have been delayed by COVID. Getting materials up here um, has been delayed. So I know that there, that's been a, you know kind of a subject of much dismay around the community. Um, you know, the contractor's doing what they can, but they delayed the closing just so that we didn't close it early earlier than necessary. Uh, next slide. So Bailey Bridge, um, we've started uh, putting the girders in place and actually right now we've got 11 of the 18 girders in place. Um, the big long spans came in on Saturday, 122 foot long. Um, and then the other, we'll have six more that'll get set tomorrow and then one more that um, had taken some damage, had to get repaired before we could put it in. Um, that one we're out hopefully have the bridge open by the 1st of September um, and they're they're making good progress right now um, we still got to do a lot of site work bringing the elevation up around the area about four feet um, for the new bridge um, yep trainer gate will be open 24 hours a day um, until we can get River Road back up and operational um, at this point it's the only area only way to access the north side of the Chena River um, on, the, on the garrison. Um, so make sure you leave extra time to get through main gate. It doesn't appear that the delays are, are super, super long. I haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary, you know, maybe a couple more minutes. Um, but if you have any questions, um, they can be directed back towards me through, through the office. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Are you wondering about all the bears in Alaska? Mr. Robert Turner, Tanner, Tanner Installation Safety Office will discuss the bear facts. Uh, good evening, my name is Robert Tanner from the Installation Safety Office. And uh, Alaska is bear country. It's one of the few places where uh, all species of North American bears live. The black bear being one of the most prominent around here. Um, you can see by the uh, uh, footprint, uh, so you can identify if you're out in the woods. Uh, notice the difference, the closeness of the claws to the toes is one of the ways you can tell about it. Um, 
make sure you keep your distance from bears. That's all bears. Um, attacks are very rare, and with the black bear, most recently, uh, it's uh, tied to people who are uh, running, jogging, got earphones on, or whatever else, being very quiet, and they kind of surprise a bear, especially with the side with his cu with the cubs. So again, um, make sure you make noise um, and never get between the mother and his cubs. As far as the brown bear, very large. Um, <clears throat> you notice the footprint from that one. The claws are much more spaced from the toes. It's a much larger foot, as you can see by the sides are much larger. Again, attacks uh, and, and encounters are very, very rare. Um, the thing about uh, uh, brown bears is they do what they call a false charge. Uh, they're not sure what you are many times, and they may do a false charge. Don't run. You can't outrun it. If you run, you went from predator to prey. Uh, so, again, you cannot run it. Hold your ground. Many times they do a false charge because they're not sure what you are, and they'll go about their business. But, again, they are rare. Uh, the polar bear, uh, again, you're going to have to go way up north to see those. They're obvious. They're big, white, fluffy, and they're cute, but they're also very dangerous and very large. Uh, and then the last one there, you got to be my age to understand that. Um, you know, they're, they're, just not, they're hard to find. They're up there with Sasquatch, that kind of thing. And, yes, they are smarter than the average bear. I had to. <laughs> All right, bear safety. Again, make noise. Avoid starting a bear. Um, if you see it, just step away. Keep your distance. Don't go up and try to hug it, pet it, take pictures or anything else. Stand your ground. You cannot outrun it. Um, even the slowest bear runs 40 to 45 miles an hour easy. Um, and if you attack, I know it sounds strange, but curl up and play dead. Try to protect yourself. Um, and then a lot of people, you want to use firearms and bear spray. I will tell you, if you're not experienced, take bear spray. It is proven that it works. Firearms, you better be really good, really fast, and very accurate in a short amount of time. There's just been a study that says most people, to include myself, could probably not be that accurate that quick when it's charging. So, again, bear spray is probably your best one. Um, and then, again, for the last bear, best thing I can do is uh, bring an extra picnic basket for him. So, other than that, hey, be, be safe out there. If you see him, take pictures, enjoy, but leave him alone. Take care. Thank you, Mr. Tanner. Do you want to have family fun event for this summer? Chaplain Check, the Religious Support Office, will discuss va Vacation Bible School Family Day. Hey, good evening, Fort Wainwright. So glad that you're tuning in tonight. So tonight I want to announce the 2020 Fort Wainwright Family VBS. It'll be taking place on the 14th of August at Southern Lights Chapel. It's a Friday evening. It'll be from 1630 to 1900 and will be a non-traditional VBS program. It's geared for family participation, so moms, dads, bring your kids out and run through our booths with your kids. We'll have an evening of fun, food, crafts, games, and a little bit of learning. Again, it'll be at Southern Lights Chapel on the corner of 8th and Neely. We do ask that you bring a mask, and we'll be observing social distancing to register you can find information on the Fort Wainwright religious support page. That information will be on there towards the end of this week. We do ask that you pre-register just to give us a heads up of how many may attend. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Chaplain Chet. Ms. Brianna Clark from the Director of Public Works will give us an update on PFAS groundwater testing. Hi everyone, my name is Bree Clark. I'm one of the restoration program managers with DPW Environmental here on the installation. Um, here to talk to you about PFAS and cram my dissertation level interest into about three minutes. Uh, PFAS, a little 101 before we get started here, is an acronym for an entire class of chemicals. Uh, it stands for a real mouthful, per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. They're odorless, colorless, tasteless, um, developed in the 1950s and used widely through the early 2000s um, in a lot of household products like nonstick pan coatings, stain blockers, uh, firefighting foams, etc. Um, recently, PFOS and PFOA, two individual PFAS compounds, have been the subject of interest and EPA has set a lifetime health advisory limit of 70 parts per trillion in drinking water. Uh, for reference, that's about three and a half drops in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So we're talking about very small concentrations here. Um, the Army's number one priority is to protect human health by preventing you from ingesting it in the drinking water. Um, so that's part of the three-pronged approach. Um, testing the drinking water, I'll touch on that briefly. Clean up past releases, that's my area of expertise, and mitigating the use of AFFF. Next slide. So for drinking water, 
Um, testing started in 2017, and there have never been a detection in the Fort Wayne Night drinking water above the EPA 70 parts per trillion. Uh, drinking water is safe. For cleanup, um, on this installation we clean up PFAS under the CERCLA process. It's a federally outlined process. It's very prescriptive. Uh, it's definitely measured in years, not, not weeks or months. Um, we are at step one of this process, and that is a preliminary assessment and site inspection for PFAS, um, also known as a PASI. So the PA portion where we do historical research has been completed and we are doing the field sampling portion, the site inspection. Uh, that will start next month, August 2020, so you may see people around the installation collecting those samples. Um, we hope to have a draft report from that January 2021, and hopefully a final report by April 2021. Uh, that's really all we know at this point, and we'll share more as we know more. Uh, these are the restoration program managers, and feel free to reach out to us anytime with any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Clark. We now move to our agenda topics. It is that time for sports and school physicals. Lieutenant Colonel Cocker from the MEDAC Med Alaska will provide some useful information. Hi, good evening everybody. Again, I'm Colonel Cocker, uh, representing Medic Alaska. Uh, tonight we want to focus on uh, those of our beneficiaries who have uh, little ones at home or not so little ones at home who are requiring school or sports physicals. Uh, recognizing that there is a little bit of uh, the unknown right now, uh, as we continue to go forward, historically we have done our school and sports physicals as a rodeo, uh, but in light of our current uh, COVID operations and to, uh, to meet our social distancing recommendations and requirements, uh, what we are doing this year instead is that we have identified set days uh, and you can see them there uh, on your screen starting tomorrow, uh, but certain days throughout the remainder of the summer uh, where our providers will be focusing on providing uh, sports and school physicals uh, for our uh, pediatric population. So uh, things that we're asking for, uh, bring any applicable paperwork with you. Uh, this should not be the first appointment that you uh, are bringing your child to. Uh, these appointments are for folks who are already established patients of Medic Alaska, uh, Bassett Army Community Hospital. Uh, any paperwork, again, if you can have the, the patient parental portion completed, that's gonna make the visit uh, go a little bit more smoothly. Uh, and then also, uh, just a reminder for everybody out there, the hospital has implemented screening processes coming into the hospital. Uh, so when you are coming for that scheduled appointment, uh, please do allow a little bit of extra time uh, to undergo that screening process to, to make it in for your appointment. Uh, so that's everything I have this evening. Uh, again, uh, rather than a rodeo, we're doing scheduled school physicals this year, scheduled sports physicals. Uh, please call us to get that appointment scheduled. Have a, have a good evening. Thank you, Colonel Cocker. Mr. Todd Wetland from North Haven Communities is here with information from North Haven. Good evening, everybody. Uh, there's a few things I'd like to, to cover, but it's really important to the entire community. Uh, one thing that's very important, but also very challenging for us is to keep the community looking in good shape. In order for us to do that, we need some help from you all as residents. Uh, one thing that we have put together is this list. This is the, uh, the community helpers list. The, uh, the folks on there, uh, you can reach out to them, and if you're not able to take care of the yard yourself, whether it be grass cutting or picking up pet feces, these folks will come in there, uh, work out a, a price with you to do that work for you. Um, we've had soldiers on there in the past. We've got uh, family members, a lot of young children who are, are looking to make a little bit of extra money. Our folks get on this list, so if you're interested, the contact information is on there. Uh, please reach out to us. We'd be glad to add you to the list. and and help keep the community looking good. Um, on the next slide, uh, another way that we help to do this work is we provide a self-help, which we have gas-powered lawnmowers, we have some really uh, good quality weed eaters. Um, we also have some DIY type items that you can uh, do a little bit of work around the house, like light bulbs and uh, drip pans and things like that. <clears throat> but uh, the self-help, uh, before you come down there, we ask that you call and make a reservation. We're trying to maintain the social distancing and prevent too many residents from congregating at the warehouse at any given time. And, and also, it's going to give you an opportunity to know that we have the equipment available for you when you arrive instead of 
come down and inquiring and, and uh, possibly everything's already checked out. So please call the number, set up an appointment, uh, get the lawnmower, the weed eater, whatever it is that you need. If your pet digs and you need some dirt to fill those holes, we have a pile of dirt out front, there's a shovel, um, but you will have to bring your own uh, bucket or something to bring the dirt back to the, the yard. Uh, you can get grass seed, all of those different things you need to keep the yard looking good. Again, please, it's very, very important to us all. Uh, we all want to live in a, in a good community, something that's uh, eye appealing. Uh, and this is a big part of it. We just don't have the staff to be able to, to get out there and, and continue to uh, try to get everybody convinced to help out. So I'm asking for that help tonight. Um, the next slide. Uh, I know that there's a lot of changes going on, especially with the COVID. The uh, orders are being delayed. Orders are being canceled. Uh, people are extending and staying in place a little bit longer. We ask that you contact us if you have any of these situations so that we can plan appropriately to help you and to help the families that are coming our direction. Um, if you've had a change in your DROS uh, from an extension, if your orders have been canceled or are going to be delayed, uh, if you previously were on notice to vacate your home uh, and that's changed, please contact us so that we can keep things up to date. That way we can appropriately plan for you to depart and for all the families that are heading this way. And then finally on the last slide, now a little bit about our, our out year development plan. Uh, we've got several projects going on. Right now, you've, I'm sure you've seen out along Gaffney Road the, the new construction. We've got 32 brand new homes going in on, on that Bear Paw ball field site. Uh, we anticipate those to get completely framed in uh, by wintertime. They'll work through the winter on the insides of those. And next spring and summer, We'll have those units coming online and we'll be ready for occupation. So that's pretty exciting. Um, they're also going to be going in and taking care of that unit that uh, um, caught fire over on the next street over. So that'll be getting taken care of this summer. And over in Chena Bend, we've got uh, 58 renovations going on. They're about halfway complete right now. Uh, as soon as we get this changeover of the, the commanders uh, from the, the uh, summer change of command, then we'll get the rest of those in renovation, and we anticipate to have those complete uh, by the end of the year is what we're shooting for right now. And then finally, in Southern Cross, we've got 98 of the, the uh, Southern Cross 8-plex type buildings. 98 of those units are going to go into a renovation where we're going to uh, give new doors and cabinets, uh, vanities, uh, light fixtures, paint, new flooring, um, lots, of, lots of good things going on in there. Uh, it's going to make those homes a lot more appealing. Uh, and that's about half, almost half of that inventory is going to get that renovation. Uh, so when that gets complete, we're going to have a lot better project of those Southern Cross Aplex units to uh, bring our residents into. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wetland. Mr. Ashcroft from APES is here with information from the exchange. Good morning, Fort Wainwright. Uh, good afternoon, excuse me. Uh, we have a couple good, real neat things happening this month. Um, it's the exchange's 125th year um, birthday on the 25th, and we're going to have some uh, one-day events. The 24-hour express and the main store, each uh, two separate drawings, will be giving away a $125 gift card. The drawing will st start on the 24th. The drawing will be um, at 1.25 p.m., and you must be present to win. The 24-Hour Express will be doing some uh, awesome combo deals and uh, popcorn and stuff. We'll have uh, cupcakes and stuff at the main store. So uh, we'll have a lot of different sales, um, events throughout the store. So please come out and enjoy. Also, next slide. Also, uh, currently we have two drawings that will be taking part near the end of the month, uh, part of the 125th, as you can see, a uh, GoPro Hero 8 Black and also a CRKT 5400 knife. Uh, so go ahead, get entered in those drawings uh, to win those. Next. And uh, we've had a wonderful turnout. We still have a lot of troops um, coming back in, so we've extended our sale 
uh, in the furniture store through August 20th um, for our clearance and our uh, new stuff coming in. And we have, uh, through the work of Ashley, we've really been able to reduce that wait time if by chance we don't have the item. And lastly, just a reminder, you order, you order online, you can pick up at the curb. You don't have to come in the store. You can just give us a call um, by the number, tell us what lane you're in, we'll bring your stuff back out to you. A couple minutes, you're gone. So it's a great opportunity for everybody. Have a great night. Stay safe, Wainwright. Thank you, Mr. Ashcroft. Ms. Angela Harmon from DECA is here with information from the commissary. Good evening, Fort Wainwright Commissary, or Commissary patrons. Um, I am Angela from your commissary, the store director. I would like to introduce about the FedSpeed families. Um, your commissary is participating in the 2020 FedSpeed family campaign. The campaign allows federal workers, customers, and employees to donate to the food bank pantries within the area. The contributions can be made through your register. Any, any item that you would like to purchase, you can donate. Um, you can also purchase a prepackaged bag for a little bit under $10. Um, this program started in June, June 1st, and it runs through July 31st. Um, as of today, we have collected about 1,500 pounds worth of food. Um, next, I would like to discuss the customer satisfaction survey. It is located on the bottom of your receipt. Um, we greatly appreciate survey participation as it helps us learn to improve a customer uh, customers' future shopping experiences and recognize the areas we are excelling in um, and to also acknowledge the employees that make your shopping experience worth the trip. Um, we are also uh, collaborating with the exchange. We have, uh, for your shopping convenience, we have um, placed exchange gift cards at the registers and you can purchase those or you can purchase our gift cards. Um, the exchange has them at their registers as well. Um, this agreement came June 22nd, and we've already been selling some of the exchange's uh, gift cards, so thank you. Um, your commissary has brought in the use of reusable bags again. Shoppers can bring in their own bags to purchase their groceries, but the commissary employees and the baggers may not bag your groceries. If you bring in your bags, you have to bag them yourself. Um, that's it for me, and hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you, Ms. Harmon. Ms. Allison Long, Director of Family and Morale, Welfare and Recreation, will pre present some updates on our MWR facilities. Hey there, Fort Wainwright, um, and actually everybody um, in the military services across Alaska. So we've had this program running for about a year now, and it's called the Alaska Bucket List Program. And you'll see the little cards on the right-hand side. You'll see them at all of our facilities. And on the front, it really overviews what the purpose of this is. But on the back, there's this amazing checklist of potential opportunities for you and your family or friends to get out and experience Alaska. And so we created this based off of a lot of input from our community members here last year. And so far, we've gotten hundreds of submissions um, through our Wainwright MWR Facebook page um, and through these contests. So. Um, all you have to do is pick one of those up or just go and experience something for the first time, take a picture, and send the photos to at Wainwright MWR. You can also email them to us at the email um, that's on there um, or post it on your social media page and tag us with hashtag Wainwright MWR and hashtag Alaska Bucket List. That will just immediately submit your photo into the contest. Um, and a few things you can check off, hike a trail, um, do a round of golf at the Chena Bend Golf Course, float the Chena River depending on the water height and the safety, um, or ride the Alaska Railroad, which is opening too. So lots of options, get out and explore Alaska. Um, one way that you can get out and explore Alaska, um, this is uh, the Valdez Glacier Campground. It's one of our campgrounds that's operated by our programs. And while this image might be fairly small, if you're looking at this on your mobile device, um, just zoom in, check it out. It is so beautiful. There's um, almost 100 campsites there. There's also cabins for rent. And we are um, cleaning thoroughly in all of our spaces and following all of the City of Valdez guidelines, which currently is requiring face coverings in all indoor locations. And of course, that's subject to change. 
change. Um, but take a look at this, make a reservation if you're gonna go down and use one of the RV camping spots or one of the cabins. And the phone number is on here too. And Valdez is just so stunning. Just like our next slide, which talks about our Seward Military Resort. So between Valdez and Seward, you'll hit two of the most beautiful places that you could see in the state of Alaska. And they're both properties of the Army here in Alaska. Um, so there is some imagery. We have hotel rooms there. Um, we also have some RV campsites. Um, some of our facilities are not open this year um, just because of COVID safety parameters, but there are still lots of options that are open in the community of Seward, including fishing charters, um, kayak, sea kayaking, uh, sightseeing tours, and of course, all the hiking and everything else. Keeping in mind in Valdez and Seward, to take um, Robert Tanner's advice about the bears, um, just anytime you get out in Alaska, go back and check out that slide, except for the Yogi Bear one. Um, I don't think they're residents here in Alaska, but the other three, and just uh, make, you, make sure you keep your distance and go out and explore, and then take pictures and submit them on the bucket list. Um, the next part here is our golf, um, China Bend Golf Course, and this is specifically talking about lessons, come out and have a lesson. Um, I have had one every summer and they've been the most amazing experience. I definitely am a, am a learner, um, but I'm keen to learn and the instructors are great. You can rent clubs, so you could do your whole um, 18 holes of golf, um, and also the fling golf we've talked about the last couple of CACs, it's the most fun thing to do, and it's covered. So I looked ahead at the weather this weekend and early next week, it does look a little bit rainy, so get out, go do fling golf at the China Bend Golf Course, take your family, experience something new, and you'll be covered so you won't get rained on. Um, just some dining options. Um, this is specifically talking about three of our facilities, the Turn, which is at the China Bend Golf Course, the Warrior Zone, and the Motherload Cafe, which is in our bowling center. Um, and all of them are doing food for takeout. So please call ahead, let us know. The phone numbers aren't on this slide, but they are on our website. Um, so this is one that I've seen a lot of um, traction on on our Facebook page. We're doing a homecoming giveaway and it's um, in partnership with one of our sponsors which is Seekins Ford Lincoln, or Seekins Ford Lincoln, sorry. Um, they, so all you have to do is take a homecoming photo and it doesn't have to be from this deployment. So if your soldier hasn't come home yet or potentially your soldier had redeployment sometime this winter or last autumn, use one of those photos and you can still submit it. Or it could be from a training exercise, but show us like the joy that you felt or that they felt or your kids felt through those photos. Submit them here, like our page, like Seekins Ford Lincoln page, um, tag a friend and then comment. And then um, the next two photos will go forward in the next round of giveaway. Um, and these are just some upcoming events that we have through our outdoor recreation program. I know a lot of you know, conversations and people are wondering what to do. We have tons of stuff going on and we're so excited to provide these services for you. So call ahead 361-6349. They are closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays so you can have the most use out of them over the weekend. We have guided trips on those dates, so boater safety courses, ATV safety courses for um, ATVs as well, um, Tanana River float trip, and then also a women in the wilderness hatchet throwing which I have not tried yet, but I've been um, really wanting to. Um, and then make sure that if you want to rent a boat or go on an ATV course or rent an ATV from us, that you have the safety courses completed. Again, 361-6349. Uh, our Better Opportunity for sing Single Soldiers program, I'll say it once, I'll say it all the time, we have the best boss program in the Army and we are so proud of it. So you can do hoodoo biking trip coming up, we have cooking in the barracks and fly fishing trips, excuse me. Um, you do have to register ahead of time so we know that we can make sure we do these trips while staying socially distant and staying socially connected. So 353-7648, um, we're excited to have you there. Um, so it's open to single service members, singles with dependents, or geo bachelors, um, and have get out, have an amazing time with those three events. So our child and youth services programs, right? We have tons of stuff going on within our CDCs and our school age program, and our youth sports and fitness program normally has, you know, float trips down the China and track and soccer and all sorts of seasonal sports that we offer. Um, and of course, COVID has kind of put a damper on that too, but what it hasn't put a damper on is our programming to make sure that your youth are fit and active and getting out and trying new things and staying active even if they're staying home a little bit more. So the next thing that we have going on 
is this virtual adventure. So check us out, Wainwright MWR. Lots of opportunities there um, to engage with our youth sports and fitness team and in our youth sports and fitness challenges. Um, and then try fling golf, biking, and floating the Chena River. And like I said earlier, just make sure that the water on the Chena isn't too high. Um, and you can always check on our Facebook page or um, even locally in town with the Department of Transportation or Fish and Game to make sure that the water on the Chena River is safe to float. Our Army Community Services team, if you're new to Garrison, Alaska, um, this is a great place to have your first visit. And we are open, we're open for appointments. Get connected, we'll help you get connected with your SFRG. You can borrow items from our lending closet. Um, and then just tons of different resources for you as you acclimate to Alaska and the community of Fairbanks and the community of Fort Wainwright. We do have a newcomers expo which happens every week um, and then tons of other items including in the newcomers introduction we have the first glimpse at Fort Wainwright um, doing bus tours and then also um, it is open not just to soldiers but also to family members and to Garrison Alaska community members. So I previously mentioned the soldier family readiness groups and getting connected with yours because it's a real big part of creating your family and your connections while you're here. Um, but if you're more than just an initial part and you want to take part in, in being a part of leading that SFRG, um, I, we have a misspelling there, I'm sorry. On July 15th, we have the key contract training um, and then the leaders training, the command team training and the command readiness represent representative training. So lots of training coming up. We are providing them virtually and um, I've heard great feedback from our um, SFRGs on the training that Victoria and the ACS team are providing. So please get signed up. And I think that is it for me. Um, thank you all and come and be a part of all of our programs and services. Thank you, Ms. Long. Colonel Ruga, do you have any closing remarks for our community? Sure. I, uh, don't have any, uh, there were no questions or comments that came in, so I don't have anything to answer. Um, I would encourage uh, as folks, if you're watching this after the, uh, the live event, please go ahead and uh, enter your comments and the, the team will diligently work to get answers for you. Um, as, you know, as well as giving the, uh, the various organizations a call, you know, FD, F, DFMWR just had a ton of great information that they just provided. Uh, the team has all, all kinds of additional information that they would love to provide and share that you know, really just can't make this uh, this forum and the amount of, of time that we have here. So please reach out to, to the team members uh, as we continue to try and uh, mitigate uh, COVID, uh, the COVID environment. Uh, I think you can see that the Garrison team has put a lot of work into opening up as many facilities as possible um, in a COVID safe manner and we continue to do that. We're having weekly meetings and we continue to tweak and try to expand on the uh, opportunities that we have. And so I would ask that you just stay tuned to uh, all of the different resources that were mentioned during the brief today as well as what PAO has posted at the bottom of the brief and uh, let us know. Keep us posted uh, on questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Join us next month for August Community Action Council on 11 August at 1800. Thank you and have a great evening.